In this episode of Financial Model Detective, I want to talk to you about the summary sheet or dashboard in a project finance model. Okay, so when you're building a financial model, you are not building a tool for yourself, right? This is a tool that you are building for other people. You have some users that will use the financial model to evaluate and appraise the project, right? So you need to understand as a financial modeler, you need to understand who are your users and what do they require when they work on the financial model. So most of the time, the user of a financial model are the executive officers, investment officers in a bank or in a fund. They need the financial model or investment appraisal analyst. They need the financial model to kind of draft papers, investment uh, memorandums or uh, project information memos so that they can send it to investors for getting money or they need it internally to, to prepare papers to send it to the board so that they can get approval for their project. Okay, so it's mainly at that level, at the very top executive level these people they can go to the financial model and check however they don't have time so the, these analysts at that you know executive level they need to take the financial model summarize it take the key points and report it to the top executive so your role as a financial modeler is to make these people lives easier right so how can you do that so first of all you need to understand what is the information that they need to extract from the financial model so let's just go and look at an example of a project info memo and see what are the key financial information and tables that are typically contained in this kind of memos. Okay, so the first example that I want to give you is from AFDB. Let's say that, you know, your project, you are looking for funding from African Development Bank. Okay, so in order to know what are the things that, you know, an investment uh, analyst, an uh, investment officer needs to report to their board, you can go to their website and check for their financial analysis guideline. That's where I am now. So you see that, you know, they have this financial analysis and appraisal of project. This is a guideline. So in the guideline, and we're going to quickly go over it, you see that, you know, they mentioned that, you know, in the in the documents that they are, the, 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 the document that they need to submit needs to have the, the investment um, they need to have the estimated project costs, the financing plan, the viability, and they also have, you know, development banks, they also do an additional economic or development impact analysis as well. So they are just mentioning the things that needs to be understood and appraised during the due diligence of a project. And they also give you an example of a table for the sources and uses of funds and things to be considered, you know, during the appraisal. So it's good that if you can go and, you know, if you're looking for uh, any funding from any institution, go and check out if they have any guideline or if they don't have ask them. So that's going to give you an indication of how they report and even the formatting, you know, you can ask them what is the formatting that you want me to apply so that I can include them in the financial model in the summary sheet. And that's going to make your life easier. So another example that I wanted to show you here is a project information memo that I found online. I cannot show you the real ones that I have, but you know, this is something that is available online. So it's about a power plant, 25 megawatts uh, in Indonesia. And if you see here, there is a section called project structure and finance. So that's where they need the financial model for. So if we go to this page six, you will have an idea here. It starts with the power plant project cost, so the detailed breakdown of a project cost. That's something that is always needed because the people who are the decision makers, they need to know exactly where their money is going, right, to finance which costs. So you, they need a, a fairly detailed breakdown of total project cost and then how it's going to be funded, how much is going to be debt, how much is going to be equity. And then you need some metrics as well, right? So about the financial viability of the project. So in terms of the IRRs and stuff like that. So these are the outputs. And also they usually report some 
key inputs as well. Like what are the loan terms? What are the uh, basically project costs per kilowatt, per megawatt, sometimes in power projects, in any projects per unit of production? So these are some key inputs that might be also useful to report in this section of the paper. So when you are building your financial model, especially you are building the summary sheet or sometimes dashboard in your project finance model, you need to take all these into consideration. And now I'm, we're going to go to Excel and I'm going to show you two examples of summary sheets that I have in my model. And another one is from Professor Edward Bodmer. Okay, so this is a typical financial model that I have, and this is the summary sheet. So usually in my summary sheet, I start on the top, I include any switches that I have in the model, whether it's for sensitivity or whether it's for inputs or any button that needs to be run, I include it in the top of my summary sheet. That's gonna make people's life easier. If they change something, they know that they can come and press the button and things gonna be sorted out. And if there are any switches that they can switch in between different scenarios, I also include the switch here on the top of my dashboard or summary sheet. The next section that I am always including is the sources and use of funds during construction. We are talking about project finance deals here and in a project finance deal and a very important statement is the sources and use of funds during construction. And you need to include the summary in the dashboard in the summary sheet so that people can just copy and paste it into their project document. As we have seen, you know, together in these two examples of the investment appraisal memos and the project information memo, we saw that they always report the summary sources and users. So you definitely want to include it here in your summary sheet as well. So the level of detail that you report here is up to you, but it should not be very long because you always have in mind that these people are going to copy and paste it into a Word document. So you don't need you know, that very, very detailed technical reports of each and every cost item, but just a summary will do. The next section that I always include, as I told you, are the key inputs, okay? Because people who are reviewing, they want to also know what were, they, they are interested to know the outputs, of course, the ratios and everything. However, they also want to have a level of understanding of the input that goes into the financial model. So that's where I report some key inputs about per megawatt in this project. It's a solar project, so per megawatt uh, installed capacity total cost and some other about the duration of the construction and in terms of the operation, reporting the tariff, the average annual generation, any escalation, any taxes, or anything that you think might be of interest to people who are reading the investment memo, you can also report it here. The next thing is the financing key parameter. So if you have loans in the, in the project, which is mostly the case in project finance deals, you want to also have uh, tables reporting the key loan terms. So for example, here I have two tranches of debt and I report, you know, the key kind of the maximum commitment, the interest and the tenor and uh, things like that. Uh, the next thing is, so once you have gone to this, the important thing that you need to report is the debt metrics, the debt ratios, okay, debt service cover ratios, and there are different metrics for calculating that, calculating on periodic basis, on 12-month basis, all that. So you need to report these ratios here, and one chart uh, or graphic that is very important, in my opinion, is this chart, where you show the cash flow available for debt service versus the debt service, these are all the dollar or euro or whatever currency amount, and then you report the ratio as well on, at the same time in one graphic. So that's going to give them an, an impression of where the project stands in terms of the cash flow when it comes to debt service and the debt payment. Uh, the next thing, of course, is the shareholders, right? So the shareholders, they also need a return from the project. So you need to include the metrics for these shareholders as well in terms of IRR, what they are getting in terms of maybe multiple of cash, maybe NPV, payback period, and also maybe a chart that can summarizes what they get on annual basis in terms of dividend for what they have put up front during construction. The other thing that I always include is a very summary uh, 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 financial statements, meaning the PL, cash flow statement, or cash flow waterfall, and the balance sheet. As I show you, let's look at this uh, investment paper that we were looking. They have a section where they 
uh, report the summary, you know, balance sheet and cash flow statement. And sometimes they don't put it in the main body of the document and they put it as an annex. Okay, so that's also something that I always report as well, a summary annual uh, financial statements. And the last thing is also a dynamic um, chart for visualizing all the cash flow items, the PNL and the balance sheet. Okay, so that can be also useful. So if these people that you're sending the model to, they want to report the net profit after tax, they can, you know, just copy and paste this one. But if, however, they're interested to show the long term liabilities, they can switch and also report the long term liability in their investment paper. Okay, so I also, let's just finish with this. In my guide sheet, I also put sometimes uh, a section where I am summarizing, you know, the key financial model assumptions. And I also have some, so these are all linked to the uh, financial model. Okay, so people, when they are uh, dealing with different model versions, they don't need to, you know, redo everything, you know, they, especially if you have, sometimes people, they create this, um, document that they it's called a data book and data book needs to be updated at the same time with different versions of the financial model so basically what i do i include my data table within my financial model so there are two benefits to that first of all you don't need to update two documents when you're uh, sending a new model version and second of all because you have some maybe you know it's maybe presented in a way that people can just copy and paste it in their investment uh, paper if needs be okay so this is about how i do this in my financial model however so what i build in my models are mainly summary sheets okay so this is not a dashboard it has some because to me dashboard dashboard is basically interactive okay so you need to have some level of interactivity with your user or provide this uh, ability to your user to interact meaning change inputs and see the output result right away so i have it for example for this one but i don't have it for the inputs you know i, I don't have many switches i have maybe one here for sculpting the debt but i didn't provide many switches here so I want to take you to an example from Professor Edward Botmer. It is one of his uh, models. You can download it from his website. I just did right away. Uh, so that's the one that I wanted to show you. He has a project summary. He calls it project summary, but it's very dashboard. You have all these switches that in live you can just change, you know, the parameters and see the impact on the charts. So you have this level of interactivity. He also has this diagrams which I think are very beautifully made you know putting all the stakeholders together and giving the possibility for users to change things and you know see the impact on the charts so yeah so depending on your project and also that's something that you need to really talk in advance with your team or with your client so you need to tell them okay I'm going to produce this financial model for you but however in terms of the reporting what are the main tables that are important to you so that you include them up front in the summary sheet of your financial model. So that's it. I hope you like this video. If you like such a content, please consider subscribing to my channel and I hope to see you in my next video. Thank you and bye. If you want to learn how to build better financial models, check out my online course on financial model spreadsheet design at courses.phoenixmode.com.